And welcome back, everybody. This is Jim Grisanzio from the Oracle Groundbreakers team, and we are live here in San Francisco at Oracle Code One. And my special guests now from India are are Malay and Sudipto. Welcome, guys. Hey, thank, you. thank you, Jim. Uh, nice to see you. Nice to meet you too, Malay. You and I have known each other for a couple of years now, maybe a year and a half or so. Nice. But Sudipto, I'm just meeting you now for the first time. Yes. So it's a pleasure. So let's start off with, um, you guys are based at Oracle in India, in uh, Bangalore, right? Right. right. Okay, so let's just start off with, you know, what do you do there? What's your main function there? Okay, so you know, I'll, I'll start with this probably. You know, we, we are the cloud solutions uh, team where we take care of the North America cl customers in their journey to cloud. I basically work for the database part, the engineered system part, and you know overall on the Oracle cloud infrastructure. Uh, you know day in and day out, we we deal with uh, you know multiple customers' migrations from their on-premise or even from the other cloud to Oracle cloud infrastructure. You know uh, probably I'll, I'll let Sudipto to speak up about the various hubs and then what we do exactly in details uh, on. Yeah, sure. So. Uh you know, we are part of uh, something called Cloud Solution Hub. So this has been a, a, a new concept, uh, which uh, you know, which we have come up with. Where you know, there is like you know, we created this hub where people, you know, kind of bring in that hackathon style, uh, you know, solution engineering job, mm -hmm. you know, for our customers. So it's like you know, co-located. Every technology on Oracle Cloud you can think of. You know, people sit together. It's you know, all of them together, and they are kind of, you know. Uh, you know, building solutions, you know, mm. innovating day in and day out. So this has been a new concept which we have kind of come up with around three years back. Really? Okay. And, and we have built uh, five hubs, four in US, one in Bangalore. Oh, those uh, are the hubs? Those, those are, are the, the hubs. Oh, okay, excellent. So, I, in fact, I was interacting with your hub in Bangalore for the Hackfest. Great, great yes, team. Yes, yeah. and, and it's, it's, we are for North America. Now we have moved into the new building in, uh, you know, in, in Bangalore. Oh, and that's and a beautiful new building. That's yeah. a beautiful new building, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very and nice, and yeah. on the same floor, it's like a global hub. All like right. for the EMEA and the APAC, uh, you know, solution engineering team also sits on the same hub and on the same floor. So it's like one floor, you know, completely doing cloud solution, you know, for our customers right. globally. So, you know, next time when you are in Bangalore, you should come. Yeah, well, now the, uh, now the pieces are starting to fit together because that, you know, I was, it was very interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so you're here at the conference. You've got multiple talks that you're, that you're doing, I assume. Um, so, what do you, see if you can give me a summary of, of uh, some of the things that you're talking about, some of the sessions. Right. So, you know, uh, the reason of coming to this open world, basically, we had, you know, two sessions and then we inter we were interacting with uh, with multiple customers, specifically the North America customers that we have worked for. You know, in two of our, two of our sessions, I know our first session was on day one, first day, first show, I would say, nine o'clock, Monday morning. That was 18 different methods of migrating your database workload to Oracle Cloud. 18 different what? Methods. Methods. What are the, yeah, oh. what are the different ways that you can, you know, migrate your workload to Oracle Cloud? How do you design an effective, how do you design a robust method of migration to uh, the, of the workload to Oracle Cloud? That's we have talked about in the very first session. It was like fantastic, a full, you know, a full house of around two, 270 guys. It, it went pretty well. There were multiple customers from multiple, you know, multiple questions from multiple customers, which we enjoyed a lot. And then, you know, on the second day, uh, we had another session. I'll, I'll probably, Sudipto, if you want to, if you want to talk about something very interesting on the second yes, session. Yes. So, you know, this has been a little aspirational. I mean, I mean, especially with autonomous, you know, coming into the fray. I mean, a lot of people comes and ask, you know, okay, you know, the traditional DBAs. What are, you know, what is Oracle doing with the traditional DBAs, right? right. If, if everything is going to be managed, you know, by Oracle, then you know, wh what are the traditional DBAs going to do? So, you know, I'm not answering that question, but I'm kind of leading in that way. So we had, what we had built is, you know, using autonomous, we had built three industry use cases, right? Which is like, you know, how autonomous can not only be a database, but also an end-to-end -end data management platform. So we have kind of built, you know, took three, uh, you know, industry challenges and, you know, and, and kind of, you know, you know, took those data from those industries into autonomous, 
deed analytics you know and and deed uh, you know both prescriptive and predictive analytics on top of it and and showed how easy it is how intuitive it is and you know how with a click of a button you can do you know multiple things and that was our second session mm. uh, you know which was a little different than what we have been i mean we have been you know between both of us we have like what 35 years cumulative 35 years of experience <laughs> on oracle technologies only and we have both started at the database then ventured into multiple oracle technologies but you know this is something where you know from a from a dba you you want to move to a end to end data management right because today if you look at autonomous database it's not only a pure database it's also right. uh, it has a broader scheme of things within the so, same platform so are people embracing that uh, so people embracing that change I, I think people are realizing that change. Yeah. I would say, you know, they, that realization is sinking in because we got very good, que you know, questions that came in. I mean, you know, there were real customers who were looking, you know, there was one person in that uh, session who was attending all autonomous session because he wanted to understand the entire landscape of, of autonomous. And, 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 and that customer does is analytics, you know, for different businesses like, right. you know, finance, retail and all that. So a lot of good questions, a lot of you know, appreciation of what autonomous, you know, what the capabilities of autonomous mm -hmm. is what, what, uh, what I saw. And, and another, what part is, another part is like, you know, I, I have a customer who keeps on, you know, very frequently keeps on telling that what benefit as a developer, he is a pure developer who works on the Java development parts, on the web logic front, and it's like he was pretty much dependent on the DBAs early to make the connectivity to the database and do his development work. But now, you know, once we have been able to migrate their workload to the autonomous, it becomes easier for them, for the developers to, you know, to start producing the code, to start writing the code from the very first day. So it's a kind of more developer-centric, more business-centric. It's a kind of, you know, a, a breakthrough in the, in the database technology where the dependencies are getting reduced. Right. So that's the customers are realizing and, and, and definitely they are embracing as well. So I'm a little confused a little bit here. So you have customers and developers that you're talking to here. Yes. Okay, so and, I mean, it, it sounds like what you're, what you're you know, talking about is more diversity in this technology, more opportunities for people to get involved and to evolve their skills. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, one thing which I would like to add to what he said is like, you know, with, with Oracle Machine Learning, which comes embedded within Autonomous and Oracle Analytics and all that, you know, it is using PL SQL, you can do machine learning. Mm -hmm. So guys like us who have spent like, you know, 15, 20 years in Oracle Technologies, PL SQL is something which we call home. So now machine learning has, you know, has come inside our home. Right. Right. So, you know, that's that's something which is, which is very interesting and which, uh, you know, the traditional PL SQL developers, they showed a lot of interest because, you know, they don't have to learn Python or, you know, R to do machine learning. They can do it in mm -hmm. the language, you know, that they have been working, say, for the last, you know, 10 years, right? So. Now, you guys were saying, if, if I heard correctly a little bit earlier off camera, that so these multiple talks that you're doing here, they're not only for Code 1, but also for Oracle Open World right. as well. So. Can you talk a little bit about the distinctions in the audience between the two, or is it pretty similar? Okay, so it's like, you know, now, you know, it's not now, I would say from the past, the realization is that, you know, for any of the business needs, you know, you have to, you have to come the administrator and the developer together, okay? Mm -hmm. So the audience is kind of mixed. I have seen the developers are going to the autonomous session. I'm seeing the, you know, the DBAs are coming to the, you know, the Java related session. I'm seeing they are coming to the Python related session. So it's a kind of a mixed audience in in Code One and Open World together. But it's fantastic. Like you know, we have the Groundbreakers Hub here. We have you know the multiple partners they have put in their booth. The Oracle Cloud infrastructure. We have see you know see the multiple Java champions here, which is which is fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So what's next for you guys? This show wraps up today or tomorrow actually right. you know one more day of sessions but the hub here is actually just you know for today um, what's next for you guys any other projects that we are that we should be talking about in India uh, probably Sudipta, if you want to if you want to give the directions what we are going to do next post open world. let's break <laughs> some news let's break some news here yeah 
Yeah, so I, I think the immediate challenge is to, you know, kind of take some of the some of the newer technology, you know, new features, whatever has been announced in open world, right? So since we are the, the solution engineering guys, we are the first one to kind of take those to our customers. Okay. So I think the immediate challenge for us is to, you know, kind of embrace those changes, be ready so that, you know, I'm sure up after open world, there is always a, you know, an increase, a spike in, in the request from customers that comes in. So I think, you know, we will have to get ourselves ready so that we can build solutions you know using those technologies those features for our customers and second we are doing you know hackathons you know in in india where you know yeah. you know you are also coming over jim yeah 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 absolutely uh, we're going to have another one in um, november and it's in the early planning stages right now i know i've been involved with these with you uh, I mean, you know, previously, these are fantastic experiences. I mean, it's really cool. It's called Oracle Code Innovate, and it's, it's basically where you get a group of Oracle engineers, and you, you travel to a customer site, and they work with the engineers at the customer site for a three-day hack fest, and they hack on projects that are specifically what the customer needs solved. This is not, you know, sort of, you know, theoretical projects. These are real projects, and we use a Scrum Agile, you know, framework, um, and it, it, you know, it, it's usually about 100 or so, between you know, 50 and 100 or so people. Uh, you got some support staff, the organizers like me are there. But the engineers immediately start collaborating on these things. And it's a really, really cool thing. Right. You've one been of, to like three of, the, of them One now. of the best part about the Code Innovate is like, you know, take everything out. It's like engineers to engineers collaboration, exactly. right? Exactly. So there is, there is no middleman in between. It's right. like, you know, the engineers from the customers Engineers from Oracle, they sit together, take a business challenge, solve it there, and then move forward. That's something fantastic about, you know, about the code innovate. Yeah, and you working with the engineers at the hub, like you were saying, yeah. um, really, really smart guys. You know, I mean, they're very, very on it, you know. Right. And, and so a lot of work gets done in just three days. Right. It's really True. just three days. Right. But what's interesting is, you know, obviously with the traffic in Bangalore is very challenging, but people get in there early and they stay late. Yes. You know, sometimes you're going home at 8 that, o'clock at that's night. That's a yeah. trick to beat the traffic, right? You, want to, you cannot avoid the technology, but then, you know, uh, to, to, to like that technology to start in the correct time, you'll come a little early yeah. and then you leave when, when the traffic is kind of muted. That's <laughs> what we always do in Bangalore. So, Jim, what we say is, you know, Bangalore traffic makes us smarter than what we are, <laughs> right? So, if you look at, you know, in, in an insightful way, you will find that. Yeah. I, mean, on a, on a, I mean, on a lighter note, I said that, but... You know, seriously, I mean, you know, this is, uh, you know, this code event is, is amazing. Yeah, out and, there and, you know, so a lot of these events we do are sort of joint events, India and the, India and the United States. So a particular customer, if it's a big customer like Cisco, like we've done in the past, they have engineering teams in the U.S. as well as India, right? Um, and so you're talking about a very large number of engineers from a single customer, you know, hacking on sometimes 15 or 20 projects. Um, so very, very cool. Um, also coming up in uh, Hyderabad in December is Sangam, right? right. So that's a two-day conference. You guys have been there, right? Yes. Can you yes. talk a little bit about what's involved there? Okay. So Sangam is kind of All India Oracle Users Group, the biggest event, okay? Uh, we, we, from heart, call it as a mini open world, okay? So I'm expecting a lot of crowd there this time. You know, uh, How many uh, usually come? So uh, it, it, it's it's more than three thousand last time. Okay. Three thousand? Yeah, most the more than three thousand. We have we have seen the counts even over three thousand. So it's a it's the biggest conference, and you know the time is very good this time, like December, uh, you know, uh, early in the December. Okay, so uh, we are expecting a, a little extra this time. Let's see. We you know, as a speaker, I have also submitted my papers. But you know we we have to see how it is going through. But definitely I'm 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 attending it this time. Probably I would love to take Sudipta as well. Will yeah. you be there? Yeah. Um, most probably yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. So yeah. let's see. We'll, okay. You know, if I'm there, I'll <laughs> we'll definitely meet. Yeah, definitely. And we'll have fun. Yeah, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna bring my camera gear and mm -hmm. uh, we'll set up and get some interviews. And I was talking to Francisco a little bit earlier. Before yeah? before that, the uh, the APA Groundbreakers is coming up. From multiple for multiple countries like oh yeah uh, the APAC are, tour yeah right. APAC Groundbreakers tour so right. it's like you know we are starting from New Zealand Wellington and then going to Melbourne and Perth 
and then it goes to Korea and then China as well. So it's going to be yeah. a, another fantastic groundbreaker conference that is coming up. Are you going in the whole tour? Uh, not really, not really. Probably, you know, I have to. Uh, I I not be able to disclose everything right now, okay. but you know, I'm, uh, I'll have to talk to the management and then finalize what I can make and what I cannot yeah. make. Uh, I'm gonna go to Singapore. I'm gonna go basically the second half okay. of it. So we'll do some interviews there. Um, just like I told Francisco, I want to get more conversations. I mean, we always talk to speakers, the technology experts, this kind of thing, which is fine, but I'm interested also in getting perspectives from the attendees, you know, people who are coming. Because there's all these hallway conversations that are taking place at these events, and they're really, really interesting. So I want to capture like a scene like this so I can get some attendees. Uh, so we'll, I'll do that at, you know, at, you know, Sangam as well. Sure. So. Sure. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for coming by. Have we, have we left anything out here? I uh, know. No, I, I think, um, you know, thank you. We got for, it all covered? Uh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank we you for thank you, inviting us. It's cool. been a privilege. Well, you know? it's, been, it's, been, it's been a pleasure seeing you guys. Thanks for coming by. Thank you. And good luck for the next you know, day or so of the show. And, sure. And um, that's it for now. At the, this is Jim Grisanzio at um, Oracle Code 1 in San Francisco. We're back with about three or four more interviews. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.